people don't understand until you understand, right? That it's the more disciplined you are, the more freedom you will experience. Welcome to the show. So today is based off of a quote by Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss says, the more voluntary suffering you build into your life, the less involuntary suffering will affect your life. Tim Ferriss. Okay, that'll preach. That is so my love language right now because if you want to be successful, and not just have a one hit wonder, but you really want to be successful and create generational wealth. So that means to affect generations to come. It's that long lasting. You've got to incur some suffering right now. And what that might look like is saying no to things in order to say yes to things later. Now, let me explain. I have always been very much in the camp of you can have it all. But I really believe that you can't have everything you want in the beginning all at once. It's just, you know, if it's happened for you, please reach out because I'd love to have you on the podcast and talk about it. But it's usually a gradual things of getting everything you want and putting teams and systems into place in order to have that, right? So in order to truly have everything you want one day. What do you need to give up right now in order to go up? I'm going to give you an example of something that I've really been thinking about a lot in my life. Okay. This is crazy. And I'm almost embarrassed to share with you, but I'm just going to share it with you because it's not going to be relatable at all. I'll just say that right now. It's stupid. Okay. It's absolutely stupid, but on some level you might be able to relate actually. So I pulled you know how you can go to your credit cards. You know, I use credit cards for everything and I just pay them off at the end of the month. Well, you can go to your credit card thingy and like type in where you spend money at, right? So I went and typed in a particular coffee shop that my kids love. And it's very convenient because we are always on the go literally seven days a week. So I pulled in there, I typed in the name on my credit card statement and I put, I pulled a report basically. I said, okay, from, uh, I think it was May, 2022 to now. So about 12 months and I almost died. I sat there with a calculator. Okay. (laughs) Because I I saw the transaction. I was like, this is nuts. $15,000 went to this particular coffee place. Now it's a place where they get food all the time. And and I do too. And it's uh, literally down the street from my house. So we'll even walk there. It's ridiculous. Okay. I have a very nice, fancy espresso machine. I have plenty of organic, healthy food in my fridge. And I have a chef that works for me Monday through Friday. What in the actual heck? So what I realized was the reason why I was doing this was just out of lack of planning. It was just lack of planning, running late all the time, And so we'd stop there because you can order it. You guys are going to know who it is now because you can order it on an app and pick it up. So it was just like super easy to swing on by there and have Coop run inside and grab all of our goods, right? And lack of planning led to that. So I wrote down, I'm like, gosh, what are all of the things that I could have invested in? Because it's one thing if that was investing in organic food, because that would be investing in my health. But I was investing in a fast food chain, basically, getting no return and into things that are not good for my health or the longevity of my kids' health either, right? So I really had to get real with myself. I'm like, okay. And it's not like this is such a lame example of voluntary suffering. But honestly, like I have to plan ahead of time to now make my coffee to make sure everybody has snacks planned and ready to go and plenty of drinks and all the things. So we don't have any stopping happening at these coffee shops anymore because I was like writing out where could this, you know, $15,000 have gone. It could have bought me 
a down payment on a fix and flip property. It could have put me into another coaching program. I mean, it could have done stuff for, you know, brain treatments that I want to get. And anyways, the list could go on and on of what you could spend $15,000 on. And when I ask myself the question of, was it worth it? No, like I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm not proud of that. And I don't want to go forward the next year with anything. So I had to go and look at all of the frivolous kind of spending that we do. And whoa, was I like surprised on what was happening there. And so now I'm going, okay, how do I build more discipline into my life? Well, I have to have a, well, I already did have a talk with my house manager, who's my chef. And I said, here are the things I need you to do Monday through Friday, because it was kind of working out. Like if I didn't give her exactly what I wanted to eat, then she just wouldn't make anything. Right. And so then it was like, I'm in my office until two o'clock and then she's gone. And then she hadn't made anything. And so there was other things happening, you know, like ordering last minute, uh, dinners and it just ridiculous, ridiculous spending. So now what I have given her is a list of 30 pre-approved meals. And if I don't have it in there, she knows that she can just go to the store and then leave the receipt and I'll pay her back for anything she needs to buy. But I told her Monday through Friday, this is what we need to have. And I always want pre-cut veggies and pre-cut salad stuff because I love a good chopped salad. So I said, make sure that's always just in the fridge. If it's not there and it's three days old, you got to toss it out. And I want fresh, fresh, fresh. So now she knows. And it's like, Kayla, all that took was legit five minutes of planning and a conversation to have that fixed up and ready to go. And it got me thinking, okay, if I could fix that and just the health and the spending thing, what else do we need to tighten up in the other areas of our lives? You know, so I always go to the business and I look at the softwares and all the things. I'm like, why are we paying, you know, X, Y, and Z? Like we barely use that thing. I realized, oh, we were paying uh, this text messaging service that we hadn't used in nine months. And I'm like, $300 a month. This is crazy. Cancel. So this is your reminder to do a little audit. Uh, and I hate that kind of stuff. I absolutely hate it. Like it is torture to me to do it, but I did it anyway. So that way, you know, I can look and really go, oh my gosh, my money is working for me, right? My money is working for me instead of me frivolously spending it out elsewhere. Where else can I implement some voluntary suffering? Well, the other area is in my workouts, right? I get up 7 a.m. I'm going to the gym. I pay for a personal trainer. She's like $200 a session. So I pay and I buy them in bulk, you know? So every time I sign up, it's like 5,000 bucks to have a bunch of sessions with her. Why do I do that? Because she pushes me. She pushes me more and challenges me to lift heavier than I thought possible for myself. It's also, if it's paid for, I'm going to show up. I have no excuses. So it's an accountability thing as well. Do I like working out? No, I genuinely, 10 years ago, I loved working out. I would, even five years ago, I loved going to Soul Cycle. That is not the case. I just would rather do a million other things. I don't, I'm in this season where I just don't really enjoy it, but I go and I push myself through and I'm always happy I've done it because I just have a better work day once I've worked out. I feel good in my clothes. I have more energy than ever before because I'm volunteering to go and lift very heavy things and be challenged at that next level. Where is some more voluntary suffering? Well, it's having hard conversations with people on your team. If you have employees, are you doing performance reviews with them? Now, if you've been listening in for any amount of time or you're brand new, um, if you're brand new, I want to let you know, my COO happens to be my sister-in-law. And obviously we are very close. She's worked with me for almost five years. Having a conversation with her doing a performance review is awkward because nobody's perfect, not even me, right? But it's awkward because it's like, okay, here's the things that you need to work on. And I would rather not ever have confrontation. I'll tell you that. That's my personality. I, I just want everybody to like me. That's like the, the little Kayla inside of me. So having those conversations, it's like, oh my gosh. But guess what? Because I'm willing to have those conversations, she steps it up 
and gets even better, right? Because there always has to be a new finish line, right? For your employees. They cannot become stagnant and comfortable. You always want to be pushing and increasing their key performance indicator, right? So if I see something going backwards that was once once on a trajectory upwards, um, I'm going to have a problem with it. We got to have a conversation, right? And I'm so grateful because she enjoys feedback. So it's more awkward for me than anything. <laughs> and I do this with all my employees. Like, hey, here's what you're doing good. And then here's what we need to work on. And then we put a coaching plan together to really make sure that you're going to hit that, right? What can I do to support you to help you hit those goals? Now, again, that's voluntary, right? Some CEOs don't do that. I didn't do that in the beginning. And then guess what? It causes pain in the long run because you end up having to fire somebody and because, you know, you weren't doing a good job at coaching them and leading them. Ultimately, that's happened to me before. So then let's look at, again, back at the wealth building. So if you can build up the muscle of putting 10 to 20% right off of the top of any commissions you make, of anything that hits your bank account, of putting that into an investment account instead of going and spending it on anything that the world tells you to spend it on, right? They, they want you to spend it all on the extra, extra, extra stuff. If you can learn to go and spend it in your investment account and invest into your future, so that way when a real estate deal pops up, you do have the extra money. Do you always need to use your own money? No, there's a lot of creative financing that you can do. But I'll tell you this, Chase and I, because we do have investment accounts, we loan money to people all the time in real estate. It's called bridge lending. So, you know, but we charge money on that money. So like, hey, Kayla, I need $100,000 for 45 days to rehab this project. Okay, that's fine. Here's your $100,000, but I'm going to charge you 20%. We don't charge that much, but I'm giving you an example. Um, We're going to charge you, you know, five points every 30 days that we don't have this money back. So it kind of, it's great for us, but for other people, because they don't have an investment account, they're paying extra for the money. Rather, like if we have a rehab that we are doing, we could just use our own money and it doesn't cost us anything. It doesn't cost us extra money because we're not borrowing it from somebody else. Hopefully that makes sense. So, you know, it's smart to have your own liquid cash that you could loan to your real estate business or to your other business if you're looking to scale it and you need a cash injection. So that takes major muscle (laughs) growth. It is hard to go and put that into your bank account and say, hey, I don't even want to see that first 10%. Hey, I don't even want to see that 20% off of that. If you can't put away 10% of $1,000, so that's $100 into an investment account, I promise you, When you get a million dollar payday, I've had a million dollar payday to take 10% of that, which is $100,000 and and not even be able to touch it. And it goes straight into an investment account. Now I love it. I get excited. I put more than that (laughs) in there because I get so freaking pumped. I'm like, yes, we're going to go invest with this money. Let's go. Right. But in that beginning, when it's a thousand dollars, that's all you got. And you got to take 10% of that. It's hard. But then you move up to the 2000. And then the 5,000 and then the 10,000. And it just becomes easier and easier until you become so obsessed with it because you know what the long-term benefits are of this. Passive, passive income. That is where mailbox money comes into play. When you could start investing in private real estate funds and just get your check monthly. You know, I run my own fund and I just did distributions for a deal that we did last year, right? And it's fun. It's like, boom. Hundreds, thousands of dollars going directly into somebody's inbox that all they had to do was sign the PPM and wire me the money. That's the only thing they had to do and do their due diligence on the deal, right? Um, and when, I, when you invest in a fund, you don't do your own like due diligence on the deal because you don't get all of um, the financials necessarily. You're more investing in the partners and in the fund. And if you're investing in me, in my fund, you're investing in me as well. You're going, okay, I trust Kayla. So if she's vetted this deal, I'm going to go in on it. But that's, that is so, so fun. I have to tell you when you just see it, boom, one of our assets that we put $50,000 into 
every single year. At this point, it's making us thousands of dollars a day just because of compound interest because we don't touch it. And that's in a cash advance syndication. If you're interested in doing that, reach out to me and DM me on Instagram to say the word cash advance and or the words cash advance and we could tell you what it is or comment on this YouTube video, cash advance. And we'll get you the details on how to be a part of that. But it's so funny because like people don't understand until you understand, right? That it's the more disciplined you are, the more freedom you will experience. It's not easy. I wrote a million dollar check. Oh oh my gosh, this is a little bit scary. Okay. There's a lot of things I could do with this million dollars. But if I invest that million dollars now in five years, It's probably going to have made me about two and a half million dollars. And that is going to like, that's going to take no time for me whatsoever. So even though it hurts a little bit right now to let go of that and release it, it's going to be worth it in the long run because of the multiplication and the fight against inflation and all of the tax breaks. And so do you see what I'm saying here? That's that, okay, life is easier when you have passive income in your life. When you have that mailbox money coming in because you did the hard thing in the beginning, which was invest, which was take the risk, which was save the money. I personally, I just had this whole epiphany too, where when I first started making money, it's like I had this, it was was out of ego. I wanted people to know I had money, right? Because I was poor growing up. And I was always the poor girl. I feel like I felt like people always felt bad for me that I didn't have money, right? And it was so sweet. I had friends in my life that their parents would like pay for my summer camps and like do really sweet stuff like that. When I started making money, I'm like, I'm gonna buy the nicest things. I went out and got a Lexus, and I just found ways to like show people I had money. And it was all ego. Ego stands for edging God out. And I still like nice things, but you won't see me walking around with like a Louis Vuitton, you know, duffel bag. Like people that do that, I'm like, do you really have money? Like I question it almost because I was like a broke, you know, I was a broke millionaire for a little bit because I was spending so much money. (laughs) And then I finally got the investing bug and it was amazing. And I'm so glad I found it, but that's why I'm glad you're listening to this podcast right now. Because, you know, let's say a Chanel bag, seven grand. That seven grand, Chanel bags, they last, okay? So they don't really lose their value. So I don't want to say that. But let's just say you put it into uh, seven grand into a cash advance syndication and you're going to make 12% on that seven grand year after year after year. That makes more sense than buying a Chanel bag that you wear around and I I, I just, I don't, I, I have a white Chanel bag. I just sold, okay? Because I was so nervous about getting the thing dirty. So I've had it for like four years and I've worn it like five times because I was so nervous all the time. Like it's white and it has like these, it's really beautiful. It has these pearls on it. And I'm like, I'm not a bag collector. Some people do that and they like consign bags and they make money that way. I'm like, that is not it. Like I just wanted a nice purse. And I was like, this was a lot of money. And I'm, it's like sitting collecting dust in my (laughs) closet because I can't like wear it with, I'm not having fun wearing it. So I'm worried about it getting dirty and losing its value. So I'm like that $7,000 goes much better into a real estate deal that I can add value to and make me make money. So we're going to end with this Tim Ferriss again, the more voluntary suffering you build into your life, the less involuntary suffering will affect your life. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, take a screenshot, share it out there on social, DM me any questions you have about any of the concepts I talked about today. All right, love ya.